Welcome to the Awakened Sober Podcast. It's a podcast about life and recovery through Christ. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about resentments. Being close to the holidays, I think it's a good subject to bring up. Just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, resentments it's... and letting them go. So let's not have them hold on to those resentments. Yes. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try. <laughs> Give you some solutions on how to let them go. I think that's the important piece there. So Right. right. So, Mike, how's your week been, man? Week's been good. You know, last week I talked about being sick the week prior. Um, last week, getting back to a little bit of normalcy, you know. Um, it was really, really great. It led into a great weekend. I spent the entire weekend with my girl, and um, that led into today, which I, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit deeper into my new position, which is really, really nice. And uh, today I, I took the first steps towards being more comfortable in that position. So mm -hmm. overall, really, really well, man. That is nice. What do you mean by deeper in my position? Because I'm thinking of what you do, right? and I might not want to go deeper. Yeah, yeah. We you know we discussed that he speaks to the grass. Well, I so, was thinking, like, I'm gonna, the, I'm, I'm about toilets. to burn it all. Yeah, no, not no, no. Okay. Um, actually, so the last couple months, um, my position is essentially we've just been trying to update and fix a lot of the things that go wrong. Right? It's a big facility. We have a lot of rooms, uh, a lot of toilets, a lot of bathrooms. Um, going deeper going mm -hmm. deeper but now you know we're starting to get into the you know the policy and procedures and inspections there you go the things like the meat and potatoes of what i'm really supposed to be doing um so i spent all day working on a, a binder for 2024 um really just trying to get everything bat down exactly how i want it so um yeah and that was the neat thing when i looked at the job description was not all the other stuff that comes with it, but really the policies, the procedures, the protection of that facility. Exactly. Yeah. You know, what to do if this happens. And I, that's a huge responsibility. Yeah. It really is. So I have to write policies and procedures for when we move into the building. So, right. Michael, you're going to come over and, and do a little help. It'll be fun. Yeah. I'll recruit you after doing it for you can that cut big the, of a you place. Can cut the grass. <laughs> Well, if, if he don't charge me, die, folks. So just get used to it. If he does not charge me forty dollars a week, I, I'd be set. Yeah, because I don't own a lot more, and I pay his service to come over for forty bucks a week. But yeah, policy, yeah. Pro, policies and procedures, I would love your help with. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's not that much fun to do. No, it's not mm. fun, but it is necessary. Integral. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You gotta, you gotta save the business. I mean, save yeah. the the ministry, whatever it may be. Definitely have to protect us and everybody else. So yes, hey Derek, how you been? I'm doing better, man. Uh, just like Grandpa was right when I was growing up, he'd always tell me growing old wasn't for no sissies. And sometimes, when boy, my back's been hurting, and he wasn't lying. You know? <laughs> I just thought Derek used it as an excuse because he didn't want to like go play pickleball or something. I'm like, no, or he didn't want to help you know friends move or do something like that. But you know what? So speaking of the friend. <laughs> Okay, I even texted him personally and said, hey, I can't do nothing for you today, but tomorrow I can do something for you. Guess what he said back? No, thanks. Not a, nothing. He ain't even commented back. He, he was about to say, not a, <laughs> yeah. I, was, yeah, I know what was, he wanted to say. Uh, he, yeah, because I was like, dude, I reached out because I wanted to help, but didn't hear nothing back. But you know what? It didn't ruin my day, so I'm okay. Yeah, I mean, he's <laughs> probably been a little busy up to his elbows in paint and demolition and there's yeah. a lot of work to do in that big, beautiful Lots house. Lots of work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But no, now that I got the proper sleeping pillows and stuff, I'm able to be able to rest properly, and my back's not hurting as bad when I get up. Nice. So, so you're going to play a little bit tomorrow. I'm telling you, I'm going to come get you by 11 o'clock, go grab some breakfast, and go play some pickleball. Well, but. 2 to 4 is, I guess we'd have to go earlier than that, so I'll just grab a court. 2 to 4 is like drop-in, so it's really cheap to play. But, yeah, we can go up there early. Yeah. I don't mind at all. Make I, sure I both y'all stretch. Well, I'm going to the gym you, in the morning. You especially better stretch. I'm going to the gym. Dude, let me tell you, okay. I, I stretch my butt off before I go in. Oh, um, yeah. And I'm going to start using, they got a really neat roller for your back to, to lay down and roll on. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I want that one for my home. <laughs> right. I'm about laying down up there and like rolling in front of people. <laughs> but at home, I could do it before I leave Free if game. I had that one here. Yeah, yeah. for yeah, sure. So it'd be nice. Right on. Mm -hmm. How you doing? You know, I'd like to say I'm doing great, but I'm not. Um, mentally, I've been in my own head, been in my own way. And uh, 
sometimes it's, it's really hard to admit, but I could tell you, I felt better telling you guys before we started this today, where, where I've been at in my own head, in my own way, and um, some of the solutions that I have to move forward. Am I looking forward to? No, but do they need to be put in place? Heck yeah. You know, um, the last year has been a different year, right? Me and Christine have had our struggles mainly because I've had my own struggles over this past year after leaving the church and starting this new one and, and doing those things. And it's there's been a lot more that I, I say I could handle that I haven't handled gracefully the entire time. Yeah, so the real struggle for me, I guess, is I'm supposed to be the strong one. I'm supposed to be the one that... Mm. carries the family I won't be able to do it <laughs> all right. it's all good so the hard thing for me is uh, I'm supposed to be the strong one I'm supposed to be the man of the house and I haven't been lately because I've been focused on so many other things and not me thanks for pointing that out Derek um, <laughs> I appreciate it but I've let my own mental health go to protect everybody else and not just deal with mine. So now it's time to deal with mine. Yeah. So that's how I've been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We say it all the time. You know, it's hard to pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. And I like to say I don't, we shouldn't pour. We should just give from that let overflow. The, the but overflow. I, I haven't had anything. I've been, I've been trying to do it on Shane's power, not God's power. So I haven't allowed his perfect strength to shine through my weakness. Mm. Okay. So let's get into. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I just want you to know we're here for you. You've been there for us throughout everything. Everything I've been through since I've known you, you've been there for me. I'm right here for you, man, anytime. It's just weird. No, it's it. weird. And I'll let so you guys take it from here for a minute. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, appreciate you yeah, letting us know. Let's, yes, let's thank you. Yeah. So, well, what are we talking about today? Resentments? Resentment and not holding on to these resentments. Learning to let go of these resentments. That's the words. Okay. All right. But we're not going to sing from that movie, right? No, hey, no, no, let no, it go. No, 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 no. Not hopefully right, not. Good. Even though it is, tis the season. Right. No. Yeah, like I'm surrounded by snowflakes. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he already had it on the shirt. Yeah, oh yeah, yep. you know he bought it day one. Oh no, no that's, that's our that's our, our club shirt, shirt from them. Huh? That's our club shirt from Oh, uh, is it really? Yes. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta join this club. Yes, it is. I, I love some of the shirts. This He's wearing one right now. This was a club shirt. Yeah, I remember that. that. Yeah. So since we got we're on here and you know, they haven't got back to me about sponsoring, you know, let's bring up uh Grunt Style. Grunt Style has a lot of nice um shirts, they have a good message on a lot of them. And then they have messages such as this, which really, you know, a little smart, smart alecky. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And that, but uh, every every dollar they goes, uh, what is it, twenty percent goes to the you know veteran funds and stopping uh, veteran suicide and all that kind of stuff. And that's so, and they're comfortable shirts, man. They feel yes. great. They look great. They're incredible. Yes. <laughs> Between Grunt Style and Till Bahala, Till Bahala always has a great positive message. They yes. don't they don't go this route. Um, yeah, both of them have great shirts. Yes. They're phenomenal. Between those two, I don't think I know of a better, like a more comfortable shirt or a better fitting shirt. I, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, well, there is a couple companies, but that's fifty dollars t shirts, and I'm not going that route. No, <laughs> you know? no. So, and where are those funds going from those t shirts? You know, they make more t shirts. Silva Hala <laughs> and Grunt Style. We yeah. know. know that they're giving it back, so that's yes. a beautiful thing. Yeah, and uh, Grunt Style's big on veterans anyway, veteran-owned, veteran yes. everything, and, and yeah. Silver Hollow's the same way. So, Just I like mean, the only, Black Rifle Coffee. The only other <laughs> great-fitting shirt is the one I'm wearing. Right. Because it's the same. The same material. Same material, yeah. 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 Right. Which those will be available very, very soon. Yeah, between these and Awake and Sober, I can't wait. Yeah. Yes. It's, We're it's looking gonna... forward to it. But let's get into resentments. Yeah, let's talk about brief it. Man. Yeah. Get a brief um, explanation of what resentments are. And that uh, resentments are feelings of bitterness, anger, and indignation. Indignation. That's a big word. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> that, so you don't do me off. 
so th there are issues that we deal with resentment it's the way we feel towards individuals the way we feel towards certain situations and that the anger the irritability the aggravations yeah yeah, yeah. that's pretty much in a brief perceived of... wrongdoing or injustice yeah yes yeah, so somebody go. wronged me and and now i'm going to hold on to that and i'm going to let it interfere with everyday life mm. so many days ruined from... days or years months i mean think about some of these resentments and bitterness that we've held on to for how long i mean you know my personal story six until 30 what 26 years yeah that's a long time you know, and mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't even know what the true resentment was until I started processing what had happened. So it's like now I'm you know, I'm still working on forgiveness. Right. Um, I, I've accepted it. Acceptance completely. But forgiveness, it's a totally different story. And yeah. I'm getting there, though. You know, it's it's we're going to talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Learning to let go of, the, of those resentments. So and that's a big one. That's that's one that's easier to hold on to. Yeah. 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 But I see people. And I guess that's the perceived part of it is, is how do you perceive what happened to you? Right. Because to me, sometimes people hold on to a, a resentment and I'm like, really, you're, you're, you're holding on to that. But right. to them, that's a big deal. Oh yeah. Right. You know? And, and so we can't really discount any of them for anybody, but sometimes dang it, it seems ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'll tell myself that too. Like, dude, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. why are, why are you being resentful right now? What are you, what can possibly good come from it? You know what I mean? Who are you hurting besides yourself? Exactly. Right. So one of the biggest resentments that I think I've ever carried in my life, and I carried it for 40 years, you know, was against a man that I loved, that I admired, and I stood by him no matter what he did. I was one, you know, I supported him. He supported me, you know. But I had that resentment, and I didn't recognize it until after 40 years, 40 plus years that I held that resentment. And now when I've been able to actually forgive that man for what had happened, I'm able to recognize the little, you know, what is hold, am I hold, uh, holding on resentment to. That's what I'm looking to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was a big, that was a big, I didn't even realize I had resentment towards it. <laughs> that was, That's what gets me. And a lot of times we get stuck up in that. We don't even realize we hold in resentment until we start getting into that four stuff and the things like that and start working and seeing, oh, wow, I'm actually upset with that individual. And I've been upset for this many years. Mm-hmm. See, and the, the big problem is, is not knowing what they are. Right. When you don't know what a resentment is, you just think you're bitter at somebody, and it, that's part of it, but it, it runs so deep. I mean, it, it consumes our thoughts a lot of times. It takes, it robs our joy, our happiness. It causes mental health issues. And, and so there's so many things. That, I mean, it will break down our body yeah, because of how it consumes us. So. Absolutely. And it's not just what another person has done. You can also resent yourself. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I've resented myself for many, many years. And frankly, we talked about it, you know, it, and it's like, how can you, how can you love anybody until you love yourself first? How can you, how can you, you know, for me, it's like, how can I respect anybody until I respect myself first? Am I doing mm -hmm. everything in my power to be better than I was yesterday? You know what I mean? So yep. that I do <laughs> bottle pop. Yeah, that <laughs> I that do. Yeah. That's been a big thing that I've been sharing a lot about on this. You know, it was like, I got to take care of this person. I got to be there for him. I got to do it. What are you doing for you? Right. If you're not really doing nothing for you, what are you doing for these other people? You yeah, know, absolutely. And then, have, like, and then there is that resentment. I've come now. I, I can actually put a word to it now. But you can tell when I'm speaking with them that they are resentful towards themselves mm -hmm. for taking care of everybody else and not taking care of them. Yeah. I think there's a word for that. A lot of times it's uh, codependency. <laughs> there's the word. Codependency. That's what that word is. Yeah. Hey, watch it, man. Watch it. <laughs> don't, don't throw that word around. That's a dangerous <laughs> word. Some people get kind of bitter about it. Because the truth hurts. <laughs> it does. I'll, I'll agree with it. I mean, the importance, what's the importance of letting them go then? I mean, we just talked about some of the negative side of it. I mean. Well, one, I'm not as, when I let, so we'll go back to that one resentment I brought up. I'm not as angry anymore. I'm not easily angered anymore. Bitter. Yeah. You know, yeah. before I'd get upset at the guy that stopped right in front of me at the, at the um, Walmart. Because, you know, right, especially where he's right in front of something I need to grab. <laughs> you know? Excuse me. <laughs> I he wouldn't want to say that. that. He'd just stay back and get mad and just yeah, yeah, yeah. 
fuming over this guy instead. What do you think you're tough? You're like four inches taller, can reach the top shelf. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, is that how you would talk to me, man? Short short jokes just came out. Uh, It it takes one to know one, so you know what I mean. No, right now, now, but I could actually bring myself to say, "Excuse me, I need to grab that right there, real quick." Right, and then going about my business and not hold on to that Mm -hmm. because resentment is one of the things you know that makes bad moments into bad days right bad weeks bad months bad years right. yeah yeah for sure yeah and that was fun to talk about last week i think it creates space for healing um something that we haven't allowed is creating space in our lives for um healing for growth and and for those types of things um it allows us to understand and empathize with people mm-hmm. and empathy was not big on my radar <laughs> for many many years right definitely not sympathy but empathy I would have never never had until I started working on my resentments towards people mm-hmm. I think we said have an uh, attitude of gratitude yeah That's last one week of the ways to get to get yeah. rid of it check out last week's podcast as we talked about the attitude of gratitude yes sir yes yeah <laughs> great episode that, that was, was a lot of fun, fun. it was a yes. lot of fun check um, it out you know and, and like right now we got our third chair I mean well really second chair I guess but Jeremy's been out the last two episodes yeah yeah jeremy we miss you but we got a blanket in your spot please come back <laughs> you are missed brother <laughs> he's like man I, i'm working on my new house I, yeah. he i know he was happy though an attitude of gratitude since he's seen other hunters there because i've been giving him trouble oh yeah in his backyard oh yeah full like ghillie suits coming up and he goes we're gonna be friends aren't we they were hunting <laughs> the land he's like oh, I, I know who my friend neighbors See, are I didn't think anybody would hunt there. And I'm just wondering if these are oddballs that are just hunting somewhere, but I'd, I'd still research it. That's just me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. He's got gratitude now with this new house that he could just hunt in his backyard. Nice. <laughs> From his deck. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm going to uh, be. Jeremy, love you, brother. Miss you, man. We can't wait for you to get back here. Another thing, letting go of resentments is um, having more positive experiences in life itself. If you're always upset or whatever, you're holding on to something, a lot of good things come your way. You don't even grab onto them because you're mm-hmm. negative. Have you ever been around that person? Just everything is negative. Yeah. Everything. I've looked yeah. in the mirror before. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Been there myself, you know. I'm just trying to think. Even in my worst use, I don't remember always just being a negative person. Yeah. But being around those people that just, you just gave them $100 and it was, why wasn't it 200 there you go. I mean, just never grateful for anything and just always negative. Oh, yeah. I, I just don't want to walk around like that. I was a pessimistic SOB when I was still using and drinking. It was, everything was awful. Son of a boxer? Son of a boxer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just, it was dirt. It, it was just, yes, it was. it's one of those things like, you know, and, and all of these things do come with recovery, like recognizing what a good thing is. Yeah, you know, and it could be the smallest, tiniest little thing. Um, like with the other day, I remember I did something earlier in the day. I forgot what I did, but every single light I hit on the way home was green. And I was like, "This is a beautiful thing." Not many people actually like look at something like that. I was like, "Thank you <laughs> for something so small." But it, it's it's crazy because I never would have noticed those things had I still been. Using no, you had to complain the fact that you, the person in front of you was driving too slow, even though you made it through every green light. <laughs> oh, uh, duh, right? I think I still do, even if I'm not. <laughs> yeah, even if I'm not resentful, I just don't like people. In I front did a of me. group on uh, anger management today, and I was I told everybody I was like, I just want you all to know, about ninety seven percent of my anger comes when I'm driving. Yeah, why is that? Because people in the speed lane, man. If you're gonna, if you're in the left lane, go fast. It's not the speed limit lane. <laughs> it's the passing lane. If you ain't passing, get over. That's why I say there should be a Shane lane. A Shane lane. I love that. <laughs> there should be a Shane lane. Oh man, it is. It's <laughs> in like Germany. It's yeah. called the Autobahn. Yeah, the Autobahn. <laughs> you get pulled over, uh, sir. I was actually in the Shane lane. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Let's go. What the is that? Yeah, it's mm. it's kind of fun, but. It's hard to see anything positive when we're just wrapped up in that and all those different resentments. Um, so yeah. it's like one of the things I do, I teach when I'm sharing is like, you know, when we get mad at that person that cut us off or that person that's standing in line and, you know, just moving so slow, 
what are we really mad at? Are we really mad at that individual or are we holding on to some kind of resentment or something that's just causing us to be upset at that particular moment? I thought you were going to go somewhere else with it. You don't know what they've been through when they pulled out in front of you. That's where I really thought you were going to go. I did that, I did that last week. I said that or today. Two weeks. I, actually did. I was like, everybody's going through something. We have no idea what it is. Yeah. Right, there's that. But, but if you're going to be, if you are if you find yourself in, you know, a, an irritated, easily irritated mood or state of mind or holding a resentful you're gonna you're gonna find a resentment in almost anything you do yeah you know? and, and it's it's so quick how that happens it just it's like a poison or a virus it just kind of spreads not only to you but to the people you love your family whoever so one thing i didn't even write about earlier was how do we recognize if we're holding on to a resentment because it's, sometimes it's hard to see in yourself. So, like, for the listeners right now, they're going, okay, so am I resentful or do I just not like other drivers on the road? How yeah. How do I gauge that? And I didn't. I, I wish I would have thought about it earlier as a, as a question, but... That's a good question. I didn't. I think most of it is going to be, I just have to search myself, is, is yeah. asking myself... I would say that, what is the consistency of this thing that is bothering you? You know what I mean? Consistency, I like. So, so maybe, like... If it's if it's like a one off, you're probably just upset. But if yeah. this thing continuously happen it happens and you continuously get irritated, angry, you know, uh, resentful, odds are it's probably your resentment, and odds are you probably need to talk to somebody about it. I agree, I agree. I and for me, it's a it's a lot of writing and searching and just asking. So why am I upset? Why is my butt flammable is what yep. my <laughs> old sponsor used to ask. Why is your butt flammable? <laughs> right. And so I have to I have to really search that and go, okay, so so what is going on with me? Why am I upset? Mm -hmm. um, but it's a tough question to ask. And and most of us don't ever want to take time to ask because we really don't care yeah. if we're upset at the moment. But I don't I don't want to walk around with an attitude. I'd rather love on people. It's it's a lot more fun. But it's so much easier to get upset than it is to actually Figure out why you're acting that way. <laughs> it is, but... That it is. <laughs> when you're upset, what do you do? Do you just forget about it, or do you try to process it and figure it out? Well, I write it out first, and so I, I can look at it later. <clears throat> but <laughs> that's what I'm doing at the moment, you know? But I do try to work it out. Try to work it out. Um, a lot of... I don't consider... I mean, some people might disagree but i don't consider myself a very angry person um yeah derek's laughing at me right now mm -hmm. there's just gonna be a big bubble lies <laughs> <laughs> bonk yeah bonk bonk is a liar but i don't i try not to, and i used to hold on to stuff so much it was like a full-time job and now i try not to hold on to anything um that is out of my control you know what i mean like i can't i can't hold resentments against people that don't even know I'm resenting them, you know. Like I don't even care, and don't even care. They're <laughs> not even. That's huge. Yeah, that's the problem. They don't care. Like what? Why am I so hyper focused on this thing that probably no one even knows what they did to make me upset? So <laughs> I, I try to I try to find myself. We use catch a check and change it all the time. We use the stop method. Stop. Take a second. Observe and proceed in a healthy manner. Okay. So like like you just said. Or you said, why am I feeling this way? And typically, if I can find the why, I can find a solution. That's why we say know your why. Know your why. why. But <laughs> Absolutely. You have to take time to actually look at it. I mean, if I'm upset, there's a difference between me being a little irritated at something and me being truly upset with that something. Mm -hmm. Like, is, there, is this something that I should really be mad at? Or is it okay just to be irritated and move on with my day? Because being irritated is okay. Even being mad or upset, we, we talked about it before. Anger is okay. It's what we do in that anger. And so if, if I'm holding on to it throughout the day, I think there's something else there that I, I need to, to look at. You know, if it consumes me for a long period of time, it's something that I need to really take a step back and go, okay, so what the heck is going on inside of me that's allowing this to happen? Right. right, that bitterness, you know, <coughs> excuse me, that we got to deal with. Yeah. So what are some common causes of resentments in personal and professional relationships? Like, some common causes. Um, 
Let's let's just start it out with big, and we can work our way to small. <laughs> okay. Sexual trauma. Sexual yeah. trauma. Hundred um, percent. Any form. Trauma is a big one. You know, yes. any form of verbal, physical, whatever it may be. Since it is directly to us, most times we're gonna hold on to it. Our body, our bodies store trauma like we're, you know, bears going into winter. <laughs> so, but let's stay here for a minute then, because we know. So. Trauma is definitely going to cause some sort of resentment, Gu like guaranteed. It's, guaranteed. Going, it's going to happen, right? Um, and we were talking before the episode about how, you know, maybe it, sometimes it is good to hold a resentment. It, sometimes it's 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 okay, not good, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to to um, you know be sad about something that happened. It's okay to feel shame and guilt. Yep, those are. Absolutely, one hundred percent normal um, emotions to feel after you suffer a trauma. And go ahead. Uh, no, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say something smart about you know. If you want to know what game or shame and guilt is, look a couple episodes back and look us up. And we had a whole podcast on shame, guilt, and grace. Absolutely. Yeah, this it's been a little while, but it is. Yeah, it's definitely there. And it's okay to to have those emotions, but is what's not okay is to to allow that resentment to build and manifest and, and um, because it's gonna cause so many issues with us. Mm -hmm. When we let it go and we let go of that resentment, we're not letting that person or that thing off the hook. And that's what we have to remember. We're gonna work through that and, and look, hopefully if you process it quick enough with somebody, a professional, if you'll process that, they'll be able to guide you of what to do with it too. Oh yeah. I mean, if, if the police need to be called, we'll make sure that happens and, and we'll be able to help. But it's going to cause more harm holding on to it than to get rid of it. Yeah. So definitely acceptance is not forgiveness. I want that to be made clear. I can accept them, something that happened that does not mean I need to forgive the perpetrator immediately. But even forgiveness though, is not condoning what happened. hundred percent. Right. So yeah. I, yeah. I mean, offering forgiveness is a great thing. Forgiving them for that trauma that, that was caused to you is a great thing. It's hard. But let me tell you, it don't let them off the hook. No. Mm -hmm. But it it unbinds you because you're the only one that is being affected in that. The, the perpetrator usually don't care. I mean, obviously, that's why they did it, right? Right. Um, they usually don't care. So we're not letting them off the hook. We're not condoning their behavior. But as what we are doing is freeing ourselves from those chains, that bondage. So... It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a tough one, man. It is. I mean, sexual trauma or any kind of trauma, I always go back to sexual trauma because that's the, a lot of times the, the perpetrator and, and, but physical abuse, emotional abuse, it's the same way. Just because I forgive, I'm not condoning it. Yeah. But that resentment, if I harbor that for a year, two years, five years, I'm killing my body. <clears throat> Absolutely. Not just that, but if, it only takes that one thing that we hold that resentment for. That allows like it's almost a foundation for everything else to be built upon. It just gets you more and more upset, especially when we get caught up in our addiction. We've seen it be going more and more deeper into it as we keep allowing these resentments to build more and more. Yeah. And that. Then our mental health. Oof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> Oof. That's. It's you drink you use to cover up that shame, that guilt, yeah. that resentment, and the problem is, is sooner or later, you want to take it further. Mm -hmm. yep. Which is what you're doing is just not enough anymore. It still hurts. Yep. It's still, you know. A lot of times, in my own case, it got to the point to where I, w I was tired of running from it, and there was only one way out. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and, and a lot of people go through that. So. I was going to say, there's probably two ways out. And I'm there. Yeah, there was. Right. It was either get the help that I so desperately needed or. Pull the plug on myself. I was going to die. I was going to die. That was it. Yeah, that, That's that's what I'm saying. Help or yeah. death. Yeah. That's your two choices. And we don't want anybody to die, obviously. We want Never. you to get help. Yeah. And there's so much freedom in it. I mean, I just got to chill. Like, the day that I knew I forgave that person, you talking about freedom like you never thought possible. Working through the resentment is one thing. The forgiveness piece... That was the greatest day of my life. I mean, that was the freest I've ever felt in my life. 
So it was it was incredible. Looking forward to that moment. <laughs> it's it's a powerful moment, <clears throat> man, without a doubt. And and I guess I've never ever really recognized how forgiving actually did help get past that resentment, like strongly, and everything that. Like I was going back to, you know, the resentments building on top of each other and that it's, you know, that foundation's gone. So when I start to resent, it's able to fall through, you know, I can get over it quicker. And that just getting over that one incident or that, uh, actually there was a multiple incidences, but working through those have helped. And that, and the person I forgave hasn't been around me in 40 years and I still was able to forgive that person and still, you know, feel better. Yeah, so the day that you forgive, You'll remember the day. I mean, you'll remember it well because it's. There's one thing saying, "Hey, I'm not going to let this hold me, hold me captive anymore." But there's another thing that when you say, "You know what? I'm not giving you any more power. I forgive you." That's what mm -hmm. it's all about. Yeah, taking your power back. Yeah, yeah. And it is so much fun not giving people power over you. Mm -hmm. If I spit on you, do I make you mad or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's I've that used simple. that three times in the last <laughs> week at work. Yes. <laughs> it's the greatest question ever. Right. It is. You know, so, so we're gonna let's talk about some other causes of resentments. Um, a couple, I mean, right off the top, uh, betrayal. Oh yeah. Uh, infidelity. Oh yeah. You know, um, a lack of trust. Yeah. Unresolved conflicts. Um. Hell, uh, uh, stress at work. St any stress in friendships, relationships. Hmm. And that's all types of relationships, right? Not all just, types of relationships. Not just man and woman relationships. We're not talking uh, father, personal. Father, son, or... daughter, mother, you know, yeah, all yeah. relationships. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, we're not just talking about intimate relationships. This is just friends. Inter yeah. interpersonal relationships. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you see friendships end over, to me, dumb stuff. Like people not going to the other person and having a conversation at all. Yeah. They're going to get mad. They're going to get bitter. So they're going to have a resentment over something that you most likely know nothing about. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, the friendships end. It's crazy how quick it happens. It is too. <laughs> like, like I challenge everybody that's listening to this to just notice if you're, if you're feeling, you know, irritated or resentful, know how, just notice how quick it builds. Because anytime that I do have a resentment, it goes Zero to 100 in a matter of sometimes hours. Seconds. Seconds. <laughs> like, yeah, f honestly, for real, moments. Yes. And that's it. So, um, And if you've lost relationships recently or, or over the time, yeah, sit back and really think through it. Why, why did this relationship end? Am I harboring a resentment? Or maybe are they harboring a resentment right. and said nothing about it? Because nothing could get fixed if you just hold it in. Mm-hmm. Nothing can ever get fixed by holding it in. If I have an issue with Derek, I go to Derek. I'm not going to go to you. I'm not going to go to anybody else and triangulate that. I'm going to go straight to Derek and say, like, hey, man, here's what's going on. Help me understand. Right. But that's a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. The unhealthy is the one that just gets resentful and says, well, screw you. And bolts, never says a word. And you're like, what just happened? Yeah. And, and we talk about favoritism, too. So, like, maybe you say something to another friend who then says something to another friend and then you got both sides combating you know pick trying to pick sides and it's just like guys can we just talk one on one mm -hmm. you know i had a recent uh experience of that and nothing was better than just sitting there talking working it out two men in recovery trying to figure shit figure stuff out I almost <laughs> I almost did it and it's all right and i it got worked. a i got a little <laughs> Yeah, right. And 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 it worked and we're both better for it, which is a beautiful yeah. thing, you know. And that's a good friend of yours. One of my best. Yeah. And so it's sometimes it, it feels like it's easier to avoid. Mm -hmm. But that's when that resentment builds. Yeah. Cuz I'm avoiding it, you're not doing anything about it. So now it's all on you. <laughs> is it? Yeah, right. <laughs> is that doesn't really? make any sense. <laughs> but that's the way our brains think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look, you you said something about me. So now it's on you to come and fix it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'd rather confront you. Yeah. I'd rather sit you guys down and if, if you need a third party, I'll sit you down and we'll have a conversation. It's more fun that way. Right. Sometimes in those relationships, you do need a mediator. 
It's wise to have. It's wise to have because stuff gets taken the wrong yeah. way all the time. And it's always good to have one person there to tell both of y'all you're stupid. Yes. <laughs> that also is a big is a big help. And then, then the other two get the resentment towards you for saying it, but that's okay. Well, hey, if we resent you, we can't resent each other. That's right. <laughs> you, you do have enough room for that, that much resentment, but <laughs> I, I mean, look, friendships, they're hard, they're, those relationships. It's easy to get resentful, but please <clears throat> confront it. Don't run from it. Yeah. Confront it. I mean, the first, the first uh, rule to solving something is identifying the problem. Accepting the problem that there is a problem. State there is a problem, and then you can work towards a healthy solution. If you never state what the problem is, I don't know. You know, we're not mind readers. We're not? No, as mm-hmm. much as we like to think oh. so. I don't know about Derek, but I know I'm not. No, I'm good. I, mm. You could just ask my wife. I know I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. If I was, I'd be. A, I'd be. I'm sure all our ladies would probably yes. say the exact same thing. We don't know what we don't know. So if you have a problem with me and you don't say anything, how am I supposed to go about? I don't even know what the problem is. So you're trying to make me figure out a solution to something I don't know. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So what I'm, we're saying is talk display and express your feelings in a healthy manner. Healthy, please. Please, that's... Oh, I'm We're feeling always gu- in a healthy manner here. I'm feeling guilty over here. There's probably somebody I need to go talk to. Really? Maybe. Let's talk about this some more, Derek. <laughs> That's another episode. Yeah, I was about to say, not, well, not I a don't. I session. don't want to think I feel I hold resentment towards an in, this individual, but maybe I need to go talk to him. Maybe they hold resentment against you? And maybe they just did the exact same thing. Right. No <laughs> idea, right? So, so it's better so to say... It's that look of, yeah. on Derek said, well, I'm not worried about if he does. Right. But then you wouldn't be having that thought. I need to have a talk with him because one of you two are holding the resentment. Well, something's going on. I mean, incident... Something something happened and we just quit talking to each other completely. And, you know, we always talked. It was always We always had communication with one another. Then all of a sudden, boom, we just quit talking. I may be upset by an action that was done, but it's not enough to, you know. To quit talking? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know. You seem to get over <laughs> things kind of quick these days. Now, you weren't always that way, though. No, because I, I was holding on to all that resentment and stuff from things of my past. And then maybe we've been able to work through those and do a lot of forgiveness. I don't hold on to stuff so much because it's a waste of my time. Yeah, what's the point? <laughs> there is none. I want to say it's a waste of time, but yeah, but what's the point, you know? But some people, we don't all think the same. No. We're not all on the same journey and the same place in our journey. And so the more mature you get in your journey, in your faith, in your recovery, the more mature that you get, the easier that it is to to handle those things. Yes, without a doubt. So it's not it's not easy for everybody. The more mature you get in your recovery too, because it, what's my recovery has got me to where I'm at with that. So that's yeah. why we're here today, sharing about recovery and life in recovery through Christ. Yeah. So and that's why I said in recovery, but really your relationship with Christ is what. Yes. That's what does it. Yes. And I I mean I love recovery obviously, but our relationship with Christ is what does it. That's what the forgiveness, that's where the forgiveness comes from. That's where the healing comes from is, is Jesus. So. Yes. That full life change yeah. starts with Christ. So what about the cycle that happens that we go through when we hold on to these resentments? What's that look like in our lives? Um, kind of goes back to the, what I was sharing earlier, but he, we hold on to that one resentment and everything else just easily stacks upon it over and over gets to the point that we're, we're about to snap and break, and then we go do things that we no longer want to do. And for me, it's that hyper-focused. Like you if said I, that just a couple minutes ago. Like, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, man. no, it's it's just I'll hyper-focus on something, and I just, oh. I cannot let it go. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, why am I why am I being like this? And, I mean, literally, I have to go and journal. If I don't journal, I'm done. I'll just, I'll keep it going. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, yeah, that that... And I think that's the addict in us, maybe the the hyper focus side. I, I don't know what non addicts. Oh, it's, 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 like it's an attitude. I, I feel like it is too, because I think I think a lot of that has to go into resentments is like that instant gratification. 
but it's in such a it's in such a way that it's like a delayed gratification at the same time. Yes. You know, you're you're getting something from it right now, but you're I'm like I'm gonna hold on to that because I'm still getting a feeling. Yeah, I don't have to keep chasing that high, huh? I can just chase anger. Yeah. Ooh. Or or you know, resentment. And anything or just straight up resentment. Yeah. Replay that event over in your head. All right, man, I'm I'm starting to let it go a little bit. Let me replay it. Right. And then we add something to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just a regular event. It becomes this bigger event that happened and, and so that yeah. way we could keep justifying that. It's like playing telephone with yourself. Never heard that. I mean, you play telephone? You know what telephone is, right? You tell, we get a big circle. You, you start <laughs> yeah, you start one. It right? go away around, it goes yeah. around and yeah. hopefully when you get back to yourself, it's the same message. But sometimes that message gets twisted. Convoluted, twisted. Well, that would be all the time. There's no way that that message comes. It, like, or do you sit in a circle? What do you do? Yeah, right? so yeah. You, you sit in a circle and you literally group. just give someone a message. I've done this in groups before talking about how, how to properly communicate. It's not what was said. It's how we say it, right? So I would give something to them, and more times than not, it would come back um, wrong. So if we sit on something, we hyper-focus on something, and just like you said, we let it elaborate because we're just – it's it's just ruminating and it's that cycle so a lot of times we'll add something to it and it's not what we remember it as it's what we kind of want to gain in resentment from it it's not what we made it it's not what we made it right which is it's just crazy because like playing telephone with yourself so benefits of letting go of these resentments Proving your emotional and mental health off the top. Yes, I agree. And your self care. I think when you when we start letting go of our resentments more, we're able to start taking care of ourselves more, because we're not wasting our time being resentful. We can actually take the time out to wash our butt or go to the gym or something like that. You yes, know, please wash your butt no matter what. <laughs> please, but we we're not focused on another person. We're focused on ourselves. Right. That's where I was going with that. If he wouldn't have said wash his butt, I had something to put in there. And then <laughs> <clears throat> that, that threw me for a loop. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. But self-care is huge. And I just wish I could remember what I was going to say. But the washing of the butt took it away. It'll come back. Well, I say that because I remember in the time of depression and stuff like that, there was a time that it's when I was still holding on to resentments and stuff that I wasn't totally taking care of myself. I didn't shower yeah. every day like I should have. Right, right. And that, but so that's why I threw that in there. Yeah, self care is a, a huge piece of it. Um, and we just talked about a little bit about you know personal growth and self awareness. Um, awareness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when you start working on resentments and you actually do like use a technique, check, catch a check, and change it or stop. You'll, you'll start being more self-aware of where I am and why I'm feeling these things. What are the causal effects? If I get to the bottom of them, I can start working on a solution to them. I keep saying that, but it's... So the catch, check, and change is a great formula. Um, and they could we could probably put something in there, yeah. but that would be up to you. They could Google just catch, check, change, and it'll yeah. walk them through it because it, there's a lot to it. But there's not. It's simple. No, it's very, it's very, very simple. Um, you, so I, I mean, I talk about it. It's one of the biggest tools that I use to this day, and I learned it. I learned you it. Learn in CPS. I learned it in CPS training. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you know, uh, six months into my recovery is when I got my certification. So, catch a check and change. It is simply, if you start to feel a certain type of way, maybe you're starting to feel angry or um, guilty or shameful or you know resentful. Catch it. Simply ask, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm starting to act a certain way. I'm starting to think a certain way. I'm starting to behave. You know, my emotions and feelings are all over the place. So you caught it. Now check it. Why am I experiencing these emotions, these thoughts, these feelings? What what are the causal effects of me feeling these things, right? Or that led me to this point. And then change it. Typically, I'll just say do opposite action. Do something completely different than what you were just doing. Or talk to somebody about it and formulate a solution. So when you're doing this, catch it, check it, change it, how are you doing it? I mean, do you just sit down and think through it all? Um, Depending on how severe it is. 
Yeah, you know, a lot of times I'm I, I use it so much that I'm pretty kind of I'm pretty good at it. I mean, with anything, it takes practice. You don't get good at anything without practicing. Um, sometimes I do have to journal it because sometimes it's not something I can just think about. I have to see it on a piece of paper. I have to see it in my journal. Yeah, and I guess that was my question is because I could. It's good. It's easy to write stories, right? And it's easy to justify our bad behaviors, our bad actions mm -hmm. if we want. So to me, it would be putting it on a piece of paper and really looking at it and saying, all right, this is what's real. Yeah. But Facts. what do you use to do that? Facts over feelings. Facts over feelings. I use this incredible pen. Mm. who is actually um, our sponsor, which is really neat. Tactile Turn. Yeah, buddy. Mine has Bonk on it, which is my <laughs> nickname for the uh, podcast. You're welcome. And mine has Token. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I am the token of this crew. Thank I you. Think, uh, I think Jeremy's got Punisher. No, he's got Big Perm. Oh, he does have Big Perm. Yeah, we changed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Punisher wasn't going to happen here. No. Nah. <laughs> he does have a tactile turn with Punisher on it, I should say, but it's not for the show. Nope. So Big Perm. Yeah, Big Perm. I love that. So yeah, um, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, these are, it's an incredible instrument. It, it really is. is. The weight in your hand, the way that it writes... Um, even the ink cartridges are completely replaceable with whatever is your favorite, which cartridge. whatever is your yeah. favorite cartridge. It literally fills everyone. Yeah. If not, you just have to shave a little bit down. Um, but no, it's, there's different kinds. This is a, this is a bolt action. Bolt action. And then there's also the side click. Side click. Yeah. And I like the bolt action the best. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it's like a fidget tool too. It 100% is, you know? So, it will drive people nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it'll drive them nuts when you play with it too much. Oh, yeah. I uh, never realized how loud it was until I put my hearing aids in. <laughs> <laughs> when I put my hearing aids in, I'm right, like, right, right. is it really that loud? But, mm -hmm. yeah, what an incredible pens, pencils, you name it. Um, yeah, they have they are phenomenal. across the board. And we actually do have a discount code on our podcast page. It yep. is Sober15. Sober15. Gets you 15% off. And that's a huge discount. It is. Yes. You know, 15% mm. off a tactile turn pen. <laughs> I was happy. I'm like, man, I, I'm going to order me some more pens myself, but I got too many out there. Yeah, right. I have a ton of them already. What were you going to say? Well, we're going to discuss, you know, coming up the Christmas holidays, what we're planning on doing. With... We could do that now since he yeah, yeah. <laughs> since we brought it up. Yeah, it's so, yeah. out. It's out. So we're going <laughs> to do a tactile turn pen giveaway. And they'll be able to choose between the mini and the short, which that's a standard. So there's three sizes. So mm -hmm. We have a mini stainless steel and we have a short mint stainless steel. Phenomenal. They say Awake and Sober and have the Reclaiming Hope logo on it. And we'll do that. So what do they need to do? So if you get a powerful testimony and you want to, want to share it here on this program with us, uh, write it to us, email it to us at info at awakensober.org. Yes, and if we pick your testimony, you will receive a free pen, and you will come on the show and share with us. And if you don't want to come in person, we'll do it to where we could do a phone interview with you Yes, um, and still have it done. We would rather have you sitting here with us um, in the studio. It would be fun. But, yeah, if you're listening to us in Texas or California, just give us a call and we'll talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we don't want to fly you out. I mean, it would be cool if you if you flew yourself out. We just don't have the funds to, to fly yet. everybody out. We don't have the funds yet, but, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and so if, we, if we're going to grab your story, we would love to uh, give you one of these great tactile turn pens and let you enjoy it. Nice. You won't ever use another pen. You won't. No, you won't. I'll, I'll tell you that now. And once you get it, you're going to spread the word like wildfire. Yeah. I, it goes quick. I have uh, I pushed these pens for a long time, and I, I just absolutely love them. And to have them as a sponsor is just incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, so what about uh, strategies of letting go of resentments? What do we got? Ways to let them go? Yeah, what can we do? I'll tell you what Journal I— Journal with one of these tactile turn pens. <laughs> wink. <laughs> so, it, but I like to catch a check and change it. Um, yes. and I went through the same training and I just, I, I need to use it more, catch it, check it, change it. I need to, to really use it more. And I think I kind of do it just with the way I journal, um, because I, I look at the, the true things, but forgiveness is probably the number one way to, to work on that, those resentments. And I, I think one of the biggest pieces is just remember, it's not condoning what they've done. It's not letting them off the hook. The forgiveness is honestly for you. Absolutely. 
What I think is funny though is I've never haven't taken the CPS training, so I didn't never heard it catch it, check it, claim it, whatever you change it, <laughs> change it, catch it, check it, change it, <clears throat> and that. But <clears throat> one of the things that I do I do practice that, and you know, catching on to when I'm starting to get upset about something, I gotta get, why am I getting upset over this one little si- simple situation? Mm-hmm. But that's to catch it, yeah. So then you know, check it. It's like that's the why. Right? Why am I doing it? Know your why. why. Know your why. Yep. And then the change is like, yeah, it ain't worth it. And I move on, you know? Yeah, and it's one of those things. It's like you do it mm. enough, it becomes second nature. Right. Yeah. Where it's, you know, it's not like, like early on, it's best to write it out. You know, it's best to journal it. Tactile turn, here you are. Um, but you do it enough, just like with all the practice, you know, all of these skills that we kind of teach in, in groups and at our own, you know, places of work and, and worship, um, we do them actively on a daily basis. If you do them on a daily basis, they get easier. And it do, it's, doesn't, it's not something that you do anymore. It's just a part of who you are and what you are as a person. So you do become more or less resentful over time. You do become more in control of your emotions and your feelings over time because you're practicing these tools nonstop. <clears throat> Excuse me. And another way. Man, you uh, you're having a rough time this evening, aren't you? Yeah, I need a cough drop or something. Something's tickling in the back of my throat, but let's get over it. Drink some water. <clears throat> water is for I hate the taste of water. Anyway, seeking support through therapy, counseling, and that. A lot of times we're holding on to things we don't even recognize what we're holding on to. Talk with somebody. There's people out there to help. Uh, we got reclaiming hope. It's what yeah. we do. We work on the whole family. We'll sit there. We'll listen. You guys, th- you got a problem you want to share with us? We'll listen, and hopefully, we can give you what you need to check it, check it, catch it, catch it, check it, change it. There it yeah. is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's gonna get used to it. Now we just got to send him to CPS training. <laughs> Which it's, you should actually. It's actually I really should. good. It's, I, it's a good it's training. Seventy-five yeah. bucks. Yeah. I just got to take my test. Really? I still haven't taken my test. You want me to be your proctor? I'll, I'll be a proctor. Jeremy's got my big perm has my thing in his email. I just gotta, I just gotta mm. take the test. Right. Well, so many so, so many videos, and you can proc me. You know. <laughs> Ephesians four thirty one and thirty two, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Um, holding on to that. It's not going to get us anywhere. It's just going to it's going to ruin our days. But yeah, seeking a therapist I think is great. Seeking Jesus' help through it all to forgive. Yes. You got to ask some Jesus. It's, we all need Jesus out there. It's <laughs> we all need Jesus. We all need it. Um, because the only way we're going to be able to forgive is to honestly seek the Lord in that. Because look, we're taught an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But not when it comes to loving others well. Right. So we we can't we can't seek justice. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And I can't remember where that's written, but I know it's in there. Is that a Samuel Jackson quote? No, <laughs> it sounded like it, didn't it? Uh, <laughs> and I know you said it earlier, Mike. Is uh, cultivating that attitude of gratitude is right. is. Is it one easy way to get rid of the the resentments inside of us? And and I know it's it, it won't work for all resentments. No, I'm I mean it, it just won't. But for the majority that we're going to run into on a daily basis, mm-hmm. an attitude of gratitude will will go a long way when it comes to a resentment. Definitely, my two things are gratitude and mindfulness. Yes, which is essentially catch a check and change it all over again. Be in the present or stop. Stop, take a second, observe, proceed. Um, worry about the facts, not the feelings. Facts. We, can, we can deal with facts. Yes. Okay. If you tell me a fact, I can make a solution. If you give me your feelings about something, that's your thought or dictation of what you think you perceived or what your you perception. Think yes. That's it. That's that is your perception. I can't do anything with that and because the, that's yours. The thing is, is your perception is your reality. Yeah. It ain't the reality. Yeah. And your feelings aren't wrong based on your perception, but your perception could be wrong, which then makes the feelings unjustified. 100%. But your feelings are real based on your perception. Yeah. Um, that's why we need facts and not perception. Mm. 
when they're overcoming these challenges of uh, letting go, like the practice, to be able to practice vulnerability. Anybody dealing with um, just letting go right now? No, but I had an issue with vulnerability just a little while ago. That's what I was getting yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to call you out, I, brother, I, but, you know. Yeah, it, and I, I didn't think it would ever be difficult to do. I always thought I was pretty vulnerable until it came to that. Because um, Christina, me and Christina were talking about on our way to lunch today. Uh, we we're going to go meet a, a guy that specializes in, he's a sex therapist, right? Um, sexual addiction therapist. And it's nice to have one. There's not many of them around. And so it's nice to have another one. He's a P PLPC, he just graduated. Um, but God took him on such a journey that he wants to be able to share that. So he went back, got his master's and and passed the test and he's doing amazing things. So I, I wanna be able to bless him and, and send him some people. But we we're having that conversation and she goes, you're afraid to let people in. And um, that was a hard thing to hear because I think I let people in pretty easy, but it's, I'm always in protection mode for me, but willing to help others. And um, I gotta be careful. I gotta make sure that I remain vulnerable. You know, I, I could talk about my past easy I'll be vulnerable when it comes to that. But talking about the current situation and how I might struggle, I wasn't being so vulnerable. So I need to make sure that I, I allow myself that vulnerability too. Right on. Yeah, you say that. right on, I say it sucks. Yeah. It does suck. <laughs> Who you? T but so but I would expect that of others. Right. right. And this I can't leave well the, if I'm gonna keep it. It's what you you poured on poured into me and got me doing to where I'm at right now. So without uncomfortability or without strife, there is no growth. Right. Well, I think we can still grow, but I think it's also foolish to try to do it on your own. Watering yourself just ain't gonna work. Mm -mm. You know. And um, I got a phone call the other day from um another pastor asking me how I was, and I'm like. Why are you reaching out? People don't reach out to me and ask that question. They just don't. I haven't, and so this ain't a, a woe me, but I haven't been checked on like that in a long time. Jeremy did it once, like he, he wrote something, and I'm like, why do you ask? I don't get asked that kind of a question. Mm -hmm. um, just certain things don't, I guess, I said it earlier, I'm supposed to have all the answers, I'm supposed to be the strong one, I'm supposed to be able to do these things, but I am human. Um, and many a times I felt like I'm the one, I'm on an island by myself. And some of that's on, my, on me. And some of that's just on people afraid to do it. Because if I see something, I reach out. I call them out, I reach out. Um, but having somebody that actually did it, it, it was different. It, it, was, it was good, but it was different. Didn't know what to do with that. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Yeah, being vulnerable sucks. Yeah. But I, I do. I feel a lot better now than I did at the beginning. Nice. I think so. that's a great that's a great message too, is you know, a lot of people listening probably feel the exact same way. Yeah. So if you know somebody that, you know, kind of has that that about them, like, you know, they got it all under control, reach out to those people. Ask them how they're doing. We said this last week or a couple of weeks ago. Always just check up on people and yeah. and just a lot of times you calling them. That's all it takes. Just a checkup. You know what I mean? Ask them how they are really doing. How, how really is it doing? with your yeah. soul? Yeah. Because if anybody would have asked me that over the last, like, off air, asked me that, I would have probably answered. But I just, it don't happen. So it leaves me to say, hey, let me keep this in. Let me, let me figure this out as I figure out everything else. On my own. On my own. Yep. I get that. And it sucks. So I will tell you, today has been a good day. Be sure to text him <laughs> at least once a week and ask how he's doing. <laughs> but it's not even that. It's just it was nice to get it out. It was nice to be able to be vulnerable. It was nice to be able to let people in. Yeah. Oh. But no, that's, I mean, yeah, we need to reach out. A lot of times that I know... I would have to say that I feel that it, I may put tension on you, and I'll tell, and I'll tell you why. I, I'm not. I'm not. Ups, I'm not upset about it. But you know, you're my boss. You're the guy that's brought me out of the. You know, that's helped bring me to Christ closer and brought me out of this 
my there was a more horrible pit miry clay whatever they say in the book and that and I guess I, at times I would feel kind of weird asking you because it's usually you helping me out and, uh, and I'm seeing it today that you know you I need to reach out <laughs> you know so I had a mentor back in the day when I first began the journey right and then he sponsored me he mentored me that reversed that role reversed right so my goal is to always hopefully pour into somebody enough to where they know more than me they're better than me and I look to them that is the goal of what we do or we should be doing I shouldn't be able to sponsor somebody for the rest of our lives I shouldn't be able to mentor somebody they should surpass me if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing if I'm doing it well, they will pass me and I will have to look to them. The student becomes a teacher. It's the way it should be. That that should be our goal, not to keep them underneath you, but to to elevate them above you. So that is my goal. Of everybody I mentor, of everybody I, I sponsor, any of it is to make them better than, than me because I want everybody to be better than me. Hmm. Morgan at it. Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah, and you do a phenomenal job. Trust the I process. Mean, yes, yeah. without a doubt. All right, uh, c closing up here. It's yeah, getting about that. I time. think we need to because we we had a long episode. Yeah, uh, we don't yeah. want to bore people. Yeah. I, I think it's just been great meat and potatoes today. Yeah, yes. absolutely. <laughs> What's your biggest takeaway from resentments? Get rid of them. What do you mean by what is my biggest takeaway? What's your biggest takeaway? What do you what do you want to say about resentments that maybe uh, you think people should know? It's usually there's a couple of those resentments that we're holding on to that hold down as a foundation of all this bitterness and anger and all these different issues that we're dealing with. When we can find out what it is that we're resenting, why we're so upset, and we can start working through that, it makes everything else just seem to flow better that way. It's like a, it's like a uh, a dam. Like you got this river of greatness and positivity flowing and you got this resentment, which is a dam holding that back. And then everything on the other side is what it is. We need to get that, take that dam away and let that, all that positivity start flowing through again. That's what I take from that. I love that. You're welcome. That's good. <laughs> you could use it sometime in your teachings. I might. You never know. <laughs> you never know. So Mike, what do you have in closing? I think that with resentments, you can't come up with a solution until you understand the problem or even identify the problem. So when you're in your interpersonal relationships, this is your relationships with your, maybe it's intimate or maybe it's just your friends, your family, um, your parents, your brothers, sisters, anybody. Talk about your problems so that you can come to a healthy solution. Because we are not mind readers. We are not supposed to know what is going on inside someone else's head. So ask your friends how they're doing. Express how you're feeling and come to a healthy solution together. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Amen. So Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as Christ Jesus has forgiven you. Amen. Forgiveness. The only way out of a, a true resentment, the only way totally out of it is to forgive. It can be hard. It could be the toughest thing. You're not condoning. I know I've said it 10 times. You're not condoning their behavior. But you still have to forgive. Because the only person that you're hurting when you don't is, is you. Yes. Is yourself. Yeah. So look, forgive somebody. It, you can free them, but you can free yourself a lot more. So just forgive. So with that, let's close. God bless you guys. Glad you were here. Um, glad you got to see a different side of me maybe today. <laughs> Even though it wasn't that fun. Heck yeah. But it was yeah. great. So. And don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. And leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys want us to talk about. Please do. And then, I mean, we're going to give somebody a beautiful tactile turn pen. So send us your testimonies at info at awakensober.org. We'll go through them. We're going to call you up and say, hey, choose which pen. But more importantly, let's get you on the show and share your story. Yes. And we're on every podcast platform out there. YouTube. Spotify, you name it, we're there. Check us out. Like, share, subscribe. Peace. All right, Next have week. a good night. Later.